What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be going over an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. And we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today, the 20th of December in 2018. So for all you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Estas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about the stock market, investing and trading, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 350 or 360 other investors and traders on a day-to-day -day basis, feel free to join that free Discord group chat guys it's very helpful in there the community that we've been able to build or build around you know the stock market and this channel has been absolutely fantastic we're talking about trading investing stocks strategies news philosophies on a day-to-day -day basis and you know if you guys want to learn more and just be in a community that's very helpful please 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 join that and again all of the social platforms the discord they're all linked down below in the description box and I can't wait to see you guys in there and let's get started with today's video. So like you guys read in the title of this video, the NASDAQ entered into bear market territory today, the 20th of December in 2018. And before I do get into this, what constitutes an index, a stock, uh, you know, an ETF um, to be in a bear market? What makes an ETF stock index be in a bear market? Very simple. From the peak of that index stock or ETF, if it falls 20% from that peak, that is considered entering into bear market territory. So we can see right off the bat here on the NASDAQ, I don't know if we're still technically in bear market territory because we ended off, you know, closing the market on a little upswing as we can see here. But the lows of the day today in terms of the NASDAQ were technically considered, uh, you know, in a bear market. So if we, if we can get it exactly on 6180, there we go. And let's see how much it fell from the peak at about 7728. So you can see it right there guys, about 7728, that's literally exactly 20.04% drop from the early October humongous sell-off that we saw across the entire stock market. And if you guys have been paying attention to my videos, I've been talking about how the NASDAQ has been getting hit <clears throat> hit the most out of the three major indexes out of the Dow, the S&P, and, you know, obviously the NASDAQ. So now that we're down 20%, well, technically we're only down about 19.5% or something like that right now because we did end up swinging back up to about 6,300. So if we see where we are right now, you know, we're down about 18, 19% at this point. But the fact that we're right on that cusp and we broke into bear market territory today, not very good sign whatsoever not a very good sign whatsoever in terms of the nasdaq so just judging off of this chart guys we clearly broke below this support that we had drawn out from a couple of trading days ago at about 6500 we clearly broke below that you know, we're making the patterns of lower lows and lower highs. It's very evident, guys, that we are in a very, you know, selling off panicky stock market right now. And if we take a look here at a couple of years, uh, not a couple of years, but, you know, a, a couple of uh, different time frames so we can get a better understanding of a couple of years back and even a year back in terms of the NASDAQ so we can see what other support levels that we can draw. So on the one year, one one day chart here we can see you know the support levels from a couple months back like we talked about in other videos those are pretty much uh you know all they've all been broken beneath of right this one was broken beneath of today at about 6300 although we are you know pushing back up above it now uh you know we did break below it about 140 points below this support so on a technical basis guys we broke below that support level with the next one being at around, you know, 61, 64 right, which is actually literally like exactly where we bottomed out at today. So 
One year, uh, you know, in terms of this past year for the NASDAQ guys, we are literally at the lows of this year, you know, right now, right? We see since the beginning of 2018, we can see it right here. The low in, in 2018 has been 61.64, and uh, we're pretty much right around that level right now. So let's just take a look at a three-year, one-week chart so we can see the next support if we do end up breaking below this, which I personally think we will, again, due to all the uh, uncertainty in the markets, you know, the tariffs, the trade war, you know, the interest rates going up, all these things that we've been talking about, and I'm sure that you've been seeing in the news, you know, this is going to have some more downside for the overall markets, in my personal opinion. So just judging off this guys, you know, the next support we really can draw out, you know, it's not here at 5500. Although this is one might as well draw it in. Why not at this point, right? Because you know, we could potentially even get there. You know, I'm not saying that we're going to get this low because that's heavily into a bear market, but just to give you guys a better perspective and you can see, you know, the different supports that I'm going to draw out here. So you can maybe do it on your own as well and just keep up with these longer term charts because at this point, guys, you know, the 180 chart, uh, is, is, it's really, we're not really able to draw any supports on it because we've broken below all of them already. You know what I mean? So now I'm just kind of transitioning into longer term charts. So this one we can draw is at about 5,700. This one we can draw at about 5,500. The next one's at about 58 ish hundred, right? We can see that. And, uh, you know, after that, you know, I, technically we, we could say about 6,000 is another one right here, right? So just keep an eye on this level right here, guys. I know we technically bounced on it today, but just keep an eye if we continue to sell off. We might be able to break below that one. And after that, you know, it's going to be around $6,000 for the NASDAQ. Uh, you know, that is the next support level. And obviously, like I've been saying, if we do end up breaking below this one, we're getting deeper and deeper deeper and deeper into bear market territory and obviously guys a bunch of large cap stocks are going to be on sale if this does end up happening a lot of them are in my personal opinion are already on sale but you know just keep an eye on all this stuff guys just keep an eye on it draw these on your own and uh you know just play it by ear see what's going on pre-market hours you know every single day to see what direction the markets are pushing so this can really dictate what you're going to be trading for that day right so let's just take a look at the dow very quickly then the s p 500 so very similar situation here right guys you know earlier this year we had a big sell-off in 2018 in about february and march we held above you know the twenty three thousand five hundred dollar level we can see that actually on the one year chart but you know obviously we plowed through that support we're at about 22,000 you know we fell all the way down to about 22,600 which is about you know we're down almost it was down almost 16% from the peak, right? And now we were able to come back up a little bit at the end of today's uh, session. We ended up swinging back up a little bit, right? You know, we ended up selling off. We swung, we swung back up, broke out of the, uh, you know, intraday resistance on the 50-day chart. But uh, pretty much, guys, you know, everything is just bloody right now. Everything is bloody. We're breaking the long-term supports. Nothing is looking good on a technical perspective, you know, technical basis. As of right now, you know, in December in 2018 in the overall stock markets. And the funny thing, guys, is that, you know, historically, the markets have actually done extremely well from December to January. You know, typically we do very well December to January. And then after the holidays, we kind of see a little sell off, right? And, you know, January, February, that has happened a lot and historically, and this is one of the worst, I believe it might be actually the worst performing uh, December ever in the stock market. Don't quote me on that, but I think I actually did hear that. Let me know if I'm right down below in the comment section. I would love to know if any of you guys actually know or can, uh, you know, uh, back that up as a factual statement. So, you know, one day, one year chart, we obviously broke below the supports. Like I said, let's take a look at the three year, one week chart. So at this point, guys, you know, 
a 22,000 Dow Jones at this point in time does not seem too unrealistic because we've been seeing 500 point losses literally back to back to back to back days. I believe Friday we had a 500 point loss, right? Monday we had a 500 point loss. I think on Tuesday we had a little bounce back day, right? Yesterday we had a big sell off after the interest rate uh, meeting, right? And today clearly we're down 2%, yet another $500 loss. So we've been losing. I think about like 1,500 points, about 1,500 in the Dow Jones since this past Friday. So, you know, another 500 to 800 point loss to get us back to around 22K doesn't seem too unrealistic as of right now. So, you know, the next support we really could draw out here, in my opinion, on the Dow Jones, you know, one of them is at around $21,600. The next one could be, you, you could make one right here. You know, it's kind of difficult when we're on uptrending patterns like this to really draw a support, right? Because when we're on uptrending patterns, we're constantly just breaking through resistances and we're just slowly, uh, you know, we're slowly raising the support level. So it's kind of difficult to draw them out. But, you know, here in situations like this where you have consolidation for a couple of, uh, you know, a couple months, that's easy to draw out. That's easy to draw out here as well. But in areas like this where it's, you know, steady growth, steady uptrend, it's kind of difficult to see them. But, you know, we can see one here at about 21.6, right? You know, maybe we can draw another one here at around 22,300. So, you know, just keep an eye on this 22,300 area. And uh, the next one after that would be 21,500. And if we honestly get that low, guys, you know, that's going to be putting us in bear territory for the Dow Jones as well. And it's going to be putting us right on this 180 simple moving average, you know, right on top of that if we're looking at the three year, one week chart. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are panicking right now. It's very obvious, you know, a lot of people are panicking, but if you have a long-term strategic plan in the stock market and you're also trading in the short term, like I personally do, and a lot of other people out there do, you know, this is just textbook stuff, guys. This just happens, or this stuff happens all of the time. Just look historically, guys. We have corrections in the stock market literally all the time. And every single one of those corrections, you know, people panic and they think it's a crash, the world's ending, you know, all of these different things, right? But, you know, historically, Every time that we've had a correction, we've bounced back and made new highs within a couple of months, whether that be a year, or two years. You know, we've bounced back to make higher highs every single time that we've had a correction, guys. Just take a look on this 20 year, one month chart, right? Let's say in 2001, right? We sold off here. I'm sure a bunch of people were panicking, selling, you know, crazily selling, very, very scared, right? But this year, guys, right, you know, if you had a long-term vision, you would have made money if you held a couple more years to 2007 when the next re recession pretty much happened, right? Because we had one here during this time period. We obviously had the 08 one, which was terrible, right? But the thing is, guys, if you invest even at the peak of the market, even if you think it's the peak the worst time to buy historically just giving based off of this 20 year chart even if you bought at the peak you know you would still be up 10 15 years later right just take a look you bought at the peak here right before the crash at 11,000 Dow Jones if you held you know another eight years that would be a $14,000 uh, Dow Jones and what is that like a 30 40 percent gain in a matter of a couple of years although that's not stellar that's not like the, the run that we saw here that's still very solid right that's still pretty, pretty good. So, you know, even this example, right? You bought here at 1370, uh, 13,700, you know, you would have lost a crap ton of money, right? All the way down here. But if you sold, so or uh, held through the pain, right? You had that long-term vision and you held for a couple more years, you would have even doubled your money within 10 years, guys, in terms of these indexes. Literally, if you just held the index, right? If you held the index, you would have doubled your money. And if you got into other stocks like Apple, Amazon, Netflix, you would have made even 
even more than double your money, right? Even more than double your money if you got into those stocks at the peak, right? So, you know, these stocks, guys, are uh, the markets right now, don't let them scare you. Don't let them deter you from your long-term vision. You got to keep that strong, guys. You got to keep that core, you know, you know, you know your, your long-term vision. You got to keep it solid because historically, stuff like this, happens right it always always happens so let's take a look at the smp 500 very quickly this one got hit pretty hard and it actually got to my 24,000 or not 24,000 2400 50 dollar price target today that i actually made a couple of videos ago uh you know i made a video called s p 500 heading to 2450 and you know we actually saw it get all the way down to 2440 today before having that nice little turnaround to uh, end off the market. But, you know, in terms of this four, uh, four hour 180 chart, everything's looking terrible, right? We were once trading in this little horizontal pattern right here. But, you know, obviously since then, falling knife, we've lost, you know, a ton of money in the index couple a uh, couple red days in a row very bad red days and you know the technicals on this one are telling us that we're breaking below the supports right we plowed through the ones back in february of 2018 and now we're testing ones from years ago right we can just take a look at this three-year one-week chart at this point guys the next support well not not really years ago right this one was from last summer in 2017 or two summers ago but we're testing support supports from you know a couple you know 12 16 uh 24 months ago at this point so just keep an eye on this level right here guys at 24 20 because on a technical basis this is the next support for the s p 500 and that'll put it right on top of this 180 simple moving average you know if we break below this 180 guys if we start to creep into the 2300s 2200s that's going to be a very very scary site you know i don't think you know i'm not saying that we're going to fall this this far you know maybe 2300 is a little bit unrealistic but Anything can really happen right now, guys. Anything can happen. And obviously, if we do get to this range, 23, 2200, that's going to be putting us very deep into a bear market or really just, you know, getting into a bear market down about 22% if this does happen. But, you know, for the S&P, guys, please, please, please just keep an eye on this level. Very key technical, into, uh, you know, technical level here, as well as on top of this uh, 180 SMA on the three-year chart, because this has acted as a support in the past so just keep an eye there guys it's going to help you determine what to trade are you going to be trading some inverse etfs are you going to be trading large cap stocks are you going to be trading market etfs that go up when the markets go down it's all you know all these decisions of what you're going to be trading all should be coming or that's what i personally do right they should all be coming from you know your analysis of the indexes and seeing you know where those indexes are pushing so that's what the markets are looking like right now guys they're looking pretty ugly not too nice on a technical perspective they're all breaking below the support levels they're already you know they're down you know pretty much the whole market at this point is negative from the beginning of 2018 and uh just things are not 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 looking good at all right now and uh you know i'm sure a bunch of people are getting crushed on their long-term positions i've been getting crushed but again having that long-term vision guys understanding that you know eventually we're going to bounce back based on historics uh based on history here and uh you know it's just a matter of time of waiting being patient and not panic selling out of strong uh companies very solid companies in times like this so let's talk about what i traded today and uh it wasn't tvix i'm sure most of you guys thought it was tvix i actually missed my opportunity in tvix today i'll get into that in a couple of minutes but what i was actually able to trade today was dgas ticker symbol dgaz and this is a natural gas based etf i'm sure most of my audience knows what this is it's a etf that goes down in price when natural gas is going up in price but it goes up in price when natural gas is selling off so i'm sure a bunch of you guys saw today the sell-off that we had in natural gas once that report came out at 10 30 we saw a lower supply in natural gas we initially started to shoot up into the 380s i believe 385 is the peak that we saw today and i can show you guys here 
on this 20 day one hour chart we can see uh today was what 12 20 let's see 2 a.m we peaked out here 6 a.m we peaked at about 390 we pulled back and at about uh let's just go to the one day we could see it easier here at about um you know, at about 8 o'clock, you can see here, 390, we started to sell off, we started to sell off, and this is when the report came out, actually, then we started to see a bullish move in natural gas, right, all the way up to here to about 383, not 385, like I said before, uh, 383 was actually where it ended up shooting at, and then we started to see a sharp sell-off here, and this is actually when I ended up entering a position in DGAS, I initially got in around $73.00. And 30 cents and I ended up adding more money on a pullback at about 7360 I believe and let's see how this correlates over here to these DGAS charts so the DGAS chart guys let's take a look and I mean obviously uh, you know we start to sell off or the, the the hike up in natural gas early in the day was sending DGAS down to about the mid 60s guys holy crap if you were to buy pre-market you would have made like 25 20% on your position today, but uh, you know the sell-off. Uh, you know the sell-off here was obviously because natural gas was moving. Uh, you know we started to sell off in natural gas, and that's when we started to push up in D gas. And this was honestly opening my eyes pre-market hours and once the bell rang. But I wanted to wait until the report today and get more of a direction in uh, natural gas before trading D gas. So you know that report came out right here right we ended up selling off you know decently down to about $71 and then once we started to break above this 50 SMA here I took a position at around 7330 like I said right we ended up riding all the way up to about 7880 I did not sell here I did not sell here mistake on my part guys honestly because I ended up selling around here at about 7612 but you know we ended up pulling back here and I realized since we're holding here guys uh, I was going to end up buying more. So I ended up buying more at around $73 and about 55 cents, bringing my average cost to around 73, about 42, I believe to be completely exact with you guys. So 7341, close enough up to about $76 and 12 cents. I believe I made about like three to 4% on this position. We can see right here. So about 3.5% on my DGAS trade today and uh, literally guys this is when I ended up walking away from my computer for an hour and we can see here you know in terms of the time correlation this is when I ended up missing TVIX like I mentioned in the chat guys I missed it and around that same time period like take take a look guys look around 11 o'clock or 11 15 once I ended up leaving my computer to go eat or whatever I did you know this is when TVIX took off literally from 62 all the way to 68 so if I was by my computer guys trust me on this I would have caught this play but you know things like this happen right you know you take a profit on a trade you step away you miss another trade this is just part of the game right guys I'm just sharing this with you so I can be a little transparent with you right you know I missed out on this trade but I'm not mad about it right because again it's part of the game stuff like this happens and uh, you just got to move on and just be happy with what you did make for that day right I made 3.5% today sure i could have made another five percent on top of that if i were at my computer literally from 62 you know up to 64 during that massive market sell-off that we saw but you know I'm not stressing it right I'm not stressing it I made 3.5 percent my daily goal is three to five percent I hit it in one trade or you know two separate positions in one trade and uh, I'm happy with it right I'm happy with it so drop a comment down below let me know what you guys ended up trading I would love to love to know and uh, you know let's chat about it so let's look at some other stocks let's see what has been going on in terms of these larger cap stocks some of my long-term investments let's talk about some of my long-term investments that have been getting crushed over these past couple of weeks so Apple guys we are in the 150s for Apple guys this is absolutely ridiculously crazy in my opinion we were at 230 literally two and a half three months ago and we're all the way down at 155 guys Guys, unbelievable. I remember I bought shares of Apple, not this Christmas, not obviously not this Christmas, last Christmas, I bought shares of Apple at around this same price, I believe, or like $140. So the fact that we're back at this price a year later, you know, 
makes me kind of happy, honestly, guys, because I want to load up on some more shares, but I'm being a little bit patient on this, guys. I'm being a little bit patient because I do see more downside. So, uh, I mean, ideally, I would like to pick up some shares in the lower 150s, but I'm just playing it by ear, seeing what's going on with the major indexes before I do end up adding more to that position. But again, just being patient with it. But let's just go back to what I was saying uh, a little bit ago. Let's see last year, Christmas. Yeah, around the 150 range, guys. Take a look at that. I remember I made a video actually that I was buying Apple stock. You know, I bought Apple stock last year. I think it was around, maybe it wasn't the 150s. Maybe it was the ones, yeah, it was actually the 170s, guys. So the fact that we're lower than where we were last Christmas is absolutely crazy. It's just an awesome buying opportunity, in my personal opinion. And this just really shows how heavily Apple has been crushed. And, you know, it's kind of obvious that Apple was going to be getting, you know, crushed from a big market sell-off <coughs> because it's one of the biggest companies out there. It was once... I don't know if it still as, it still is actually by market capitalization, but it once was the largest company, right? Remember, you know, a couple months back when we hit a one trillion dollar market cap. Well, Apple's the first company that was able to do that. And now, obviously, guys, you know the market cap's probably around like seven hundred billion right now. Don't quote me; I haven't checked it in a little bit. But you know, since the sell-off, obviously, the market cap is probably down quite a bit, right? You know, when shares are being sold off, stock prices are going down. You know, obviously, that's going to shrink and shrink and shrink the market capitalization. But you know, again, it's just a it's just a buying opportunity in my personal opinion, and uh, just very interesting times that we're in, guys. Very very interesting times because you know we're seeing a huge sell off in the market, but we're not seeing any drastic economic uh you know economic uh situations that we typically see before the stock market does end up getting crushed. So we're actually in a very uh tricky, interesting predicament right now in time in 2018 it's a crazy time to be alive and be in the stock market right guys it's just a crazy crazy time so you know that's what i'm looking at in terms of apple you know another position i have i'm sure all you guys know this is facebook i started scaling in at around 170 a couple months back bought more at 140 bought more at 130 you know still holding on to those shares obviously i'm a long-term investor and a trader but you know just to show you know facebook stock guys is down like a ridiculous amount it's down 40% from the peak. So, you know, these tech stocks, these main stocks in my portfolio have been in a bear market for the past couple of months, right? And I've talked about that in other videos. So, you know, what other stocks are in my long-term portfolio? I'm about to show you guys uh, some of my uh, stocks. You know, obviously, Micron's in my long-term portfolio. You know, I don't even want to get started on Micron. This one, guys, literally... I started buying in around 60, I think, not 60, maybe like 55, right? Ended up buying more at around 52, and I'm still holding on to those shares, guys. I'm down, like, being honest with you, I'm down a decent chunk on the Micron shares, like 35, 40%. Down a pretty big amount, to be honest with you guys. But, you know, just to show you, you know, I'm just being transparent with you, just so you can see you know, the amount uh, uh, that these stocks have been getting crushed, some of them more than others, but a lot of these stocks are down way more than what the indexes are showing, right? Because a lot of these, uh, you know, quote unquote value stocks have been holding up the stock market, right? I've been holding up the indexes, but once these stocks start to fall, right, we obviously saw J&J &J go, right? That one got crushed, but some other value stocks that have been doing well, once we start to see them go, right, I think the index Indexes are going to fall and get deeper and deeper and deeper into bear market territory. And like we saw in the beginning of this video, the Nasdaq's already in bear market territory, guys. So if these value stocks, if these safer blue chip stocks start to go down heavily, it's going to get real, real ugly quick. And I would not be surprised if we get, you know, 20, 30% down in the overall markets. But before we get ahead of ourselves, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just wait and see, you know, let's wait a couple more weeks. Let's see how this plays out. Are we going to end up bouncing back, you know, because we've been selling off pretty strong. You know, we could even see a market bounce back in the next couple of weeks, couple of months, especially if Trump, you know, and, and uh, China you know, come to an agreement, which is possible, guys. It's possible. It's going to be difficult, but it's possible. But we just got to wait and see, guys. All we can do is wait 
and be patient and keep studying and keep, you know, building our strategies and philosophies and all the stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for rocking with me. Thanks for supporting as always. Have a great one. Peace out.